All right, guys, we're back. It's been a couple, couple weeks, three weeks or so, maybe a little longer. I can't really remember since you saw the last section of the video. Got some stuff that's a little bit different on the machine. Want to talk about it. Want to let you guys know where we are. So um, probably the most recent change you guys are going to see. I've got an Icon 2 now. I took the Icon 1 off because uh, I couldn't do the forward programming with my new Jetty Duplex radio. So really excited to try that out. Maybe some videos about that in the future. I don't know. I got the Jetty receiver on there. One wire connection to the Icon and you can do all your programming down that wire. It's going to be really cool. Uh, put a second power wire on there just, you know, for, you know, ease of mind and stuff. Um, I thought I was originally going to go with some Savox servos I had, but I didn't know this kit only accepts mini servos. So went with the KSTs. Um, still rocking the Castle, the Talon 90, Savox 500 kV motor because I'm doing some low head speed stuff. Um, in the first video you saw of the, the maiden flight, we were running a 12 tooth pinion and I was running about, you know, 1200 RPM or so. And I really was a little bit uncomfortable going lower than that, but I got a 13 tooth pinion on now. Um, same motor setup, copied the profile from the Icon 1 into the Icon 2, double checked everything. It was the same. It flew fine. Got about four flights on it. Um, experimenting with a couple things here so um, first off it is possible to get some telemetry from the talon 90 to the icon displayed back to the jetty duplex <clears throat> radio system but you've got to make up this you know special wire with a pull-up resistor i didn't really like the way that looked so um i've got i've got something coming in the mail it's supposed to be here saturday uh, maybe do a follow-up video on it. It's uh, custom made, made it myself. I'm going to try to make something plug and play. Uh, maybe, maybe sell them. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. Um, the other thing is I've been investigating um, the tail uh, on the scale model and the tail on the real one. And it looks like the tail is on the wrong side. So, uh, the mechanics fly great. Everything's cool. It's just about getting comfortable with them, you know, and it's going in a scale body. So do you, how comfortable do you really need to be? You know, um, thinking about flipping this guy over here, uh, trying it, trying it with it on the other side. Don't know. Just thinking about it. Um, we're going to see how it goes. You know, I got the scale body down here. It's waiting. It's ready. Um, so moving forward, you know, there's some updates on the machine. That's what's going on. The next thing I've got to do is uh, when I get ready to put it in the body, I got to get the tail case off. I got to get the skids off and I got to, I got to cut some shims um, to shim the thing in the fuselage, get everything set up just the way we want it. And uh, we'll go from there. Still thinking I'm going to do some lights also, scale lighting on the fuselage, but you know, that'll be for a later video. Okay, welcome back. You guys just watched um, an update video that was supposed to go out a couple months ago, but life happens, so it didn't go out. Um, I'm going to show you the next update um, back to back. So uh, here's where we are. We've got the mechanics in the fuselage i have built uh some plywood spacers to kind of shim everything up it fits real good um really happy with how it's kind of turning out got the tail mounted uh haven't flipped the tail box over yet i don't know if i'm going to it seems like a lot of extra work when we're this close and i got some other stuff going on in the background. I'll give you a sneak peek of in just a second, but uh, we're still working on it uh, off and on. Got got some, some different things going on. 
Uh, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but I had to relocate the tail servo to the boom to account for the uh, the space available in the fuselage tail for the push rod. So I have a brand new uh, in the package push rod here that we're going to make up. It's going to be shorter than stock. Um, and it'll run from the servo that's right here back to the tail box. And then if we flip it over, it won't, it won't make a difference on the length. Um, I found a boom mount for the servo from uh, Vario Helicopters, ordered that thing up. It came pretty quick. Like I said, I've been working on this for a little while um, and you guys haven't really gotten an update to see where we are. I uh, haven't flown it yet with the fuselage on, just you know, trying to tidy some things up. Um, this video, well, right now that has been taken after perry so i went to perry georgia big swap meet if you guys haven't heard about it look it up um while i was down there dave's rc electronics was there and uh, i knew i wanted to get a light kit for this we've talked about it so this is going to be the light kit that uh that i purchased here uh runs on five or six volts uh see i got plenty of wire here uh let me see if i can get it Get it tuned in. That looks that looks about right, right there. So what we got? Got our navigation lights. We've got a simulated beacon here. We've got our strobe, and we've got our landing lights, and uh, the reflective cone for the landing lights. Uh, this thing's got some some pretty cool th different modes. So if I turn back on my servo tester, you'll see that the landing lights go out. The strobe, the beacon, uh, the strobe, the beacon, and the navigation lights stay on. And then if I keep rotating, uh, let's see what happens next. The strobe goes out, but the beacon stays running with the nav lights. Keep going, beacon goes out, just the nav lights. Um, I think if I go all the way back to the top end, Maybe the landing lights also blink. I don't know. I haven't played with it a bunch. Um, just enough to make sure it's going to work. The links look good. Uh, we're going to figure out where to put the uh, all the lighting on this when it when it when it gets uh, pretty close. Of course, we still have the uh, the cockpit. I think it's back here. We're going to glue in. With the, with, the, with the seats. So all that's coming up. Um, I really wanna finalize the, the fuselage installation. I mean, it's it's in there pretty good. It's not, it's not going anywhere. Um, I wanna try to stabilize this area here so we get rid of some of this. Um, not sure how I'm gonna do that yet. And then we're gonna run, you know, run the navigation lights and everything. Uh, Everything will be cool. It's already flown, so we know it works. And then, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna put that reflector for the landing light. I think it's gonna look real good, glued into the backside right there. And then we'll have to come up with a creative way to get power to the front because we wanna keep this removable front canopy here. But it's coming along good. Uh, I'll try to do more regular updates. I got a lot of YouTube videos I need to edit. I've been shooting video, but I really haven't been in an edit editing mood. Um, but I'll go ahead and give you guys, I'll go ahead and unplug this. I'll give you guys a sneak peek what, what's been holding me up exactly. So, you know, other than the holidays, um, I think I didn't, I think the last time I uploaded was like October. So other than the holidays, uh, went to Perry um, been flying since the weather's getting a little warmer, um, for us down here in the South, uh, the, you know, the winter comes and goes. I got, um, I picked up this 3d printer last month. You'll have to excuse the mess. Um, it's been working real good, really happy with it. Uh, after I got some of the quirks, uh, figured out, um, 
built this storage rack uh, for my planes, picked up that Beast 60 at Perry also. Uh, there's the laser, flew it last week, get, get, getting some more time on it, maybe do a follow-up video on that. It, it really needs it really needs a follow up video and uh, ESM T28 in the back that I've been hanging on to for a while. Um, and then you know on the side we've been working on this is another ESM T28. It's all electric. Uh, it needed it needed some things. I got the uh, I got a, the battery tray. I got to repair the battery tray. The batteries I have for it did not fit. Um, we'll make a video on that at least like an update video kind of showing my showing what i've got off you know i don't have much but i've got some stuff i think that's pretty cool worthy of a video and then the newest addition to the shop which has really taken a lot of my time um this here's a boomerang nano uh king tech k60 uh you can see it's it's a wiring mess right now and i've got the gas tank out i did run this this past saturday the radio tray was just not not very good, not very clean. Um, it, it was functional. It just wasn't how I would do it, which is usually how things from a swap meet end up getting worked on before they're flown. I replaced all the extensions inside. I had to replace a couple servos because I really didn't like uh, the way some things had happened. Um, we'll do th th this thing deserves its own video. Um, my first turbine so so we'll get you know our first turbine experience um uh, hammered out and um even like i said excuse the mess in the shop even the even the blanick came out it's been a long time since uh since i put hands on that thing um but uh it, it's coming too so we got a lot of stuff going on a lot of stuff in the shop um like I said, if you guys like these videos, I would appreciate if you could uh, follow me, subscribe. I, I'm going to try to upload more more regularly, but you know it's it's just as kind of hard to do as the world gets back to um, to normal. You know, after the pandemic, and you know people aren't working from home as much and and all that. So anyway, uh, guys, if you enjoy it, if you want to see some of this stuff, like, share, and subscribe. And um, we'll see you in the next one.